right as the semi goes by. So we're out here in, uh, uh, what town is this? Carrizozo, New Mexico, county of- Lincoln County. Lincoln County. Uh, Courtney just got out of jail. This is her attorney, Zach Cook. Um, so can you tell us kind of what's what's going on here? In sure, so James, you've summarized it very well on your videos. Uh, what happened is that uh, my client, Courtney Alcala, was arrested for uh, uh, something else back in March. Um, that, that we maintain her innocence on that as well. Uh, it was a bogus charge that we're fighting. And uh, so when she was transported to Lincoln County Detention Center in Carrizozo from where she lives in Alto, New Mexico, um, the transport officer, who's a deputy of the uh, Lincoln County Sheriff's Department, began a conversation with her that was very inappropriate. He was inviting her to uh, come up to Albuquerque to spend a night with him in his hotel when he would be up there in March for uh, training. Uh, so essentially he was inviting uh, a woman who was in his custody in detention, handcuffed in the back of a police car that he was transporting to jail. And he's asking her to come up and spend a romantic evening with him in, in a hotel that's being paid for by the taxpayers because he's up there on a police train. Um, I'm sorry. I can't even see the car, so. I can't even reject it. We're going to have to wait for the I'm so sorry. All right, I apologize. My phone's broken, so I can't even see the call. Uh, All right, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Sure. Um, so so uh, Courtney's being transported in handcuffs in custody of the police. Police officer starts hitting on her, uh, trying to talk her into coming to his hotel that's being paid for by taxpayers when he's at a police training in Albuquerque. So uh, Courtney explained this to me when after she had engaged me to represent her in the underlying charge. And I was very disturbed by what she told me. And so I, on Courtney's behalf, requested public records, including the video of that transport. And that was, uh, I don't know, March 19th, around there, on or about March 19th, I did the inspection of public records request for the video that would show what Courtney described. And the next day, uh, the sheriff of Lincoln County posted on Facebook a, a, a video talking about how um, how this is not, how is. disappointed he is and this is not who we are and blah, blah, blah. And you know, that there were no criminal charges or no criminal activity. He said that there, were no, there was no criminal activity in that post. Well, and then a couple of days later, I did another inspection of public records request asking for any records of the sheriff referring the matter to an outside agency, state police, uh, whoever else um, referring it for a criminal investigation because potentially there was a crime committed. Mm -hmm. I'm not, the, you know, the prosecutor. I, but I, I think the, the 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 fact that there's a police officer trying to entice a woman to to, to have a relationship with him while she's uh, in in a very uh, weak position uh, in handcuffs in his custody, it doesn't. It sounds like a crime to me, but according to Mike's, uh, the sheriff's um, video, he had already written it off. No, no criminal activity. This is just a personnel matter, an ethics matter. I think he might have said. Um, so he put him on uh, uh, um, administrative leave, which he should have. Uh, but it also should have been referred out for uh, for a criminal investigation. And after my, I think that's the sheriff right over there. I'll be darned. Um, so after I sent the inspection public records request, then uh, the next day I got a phone call from the district attorney's office and they had now at that time been referred the case after my request. So apparently he wasn't going to do anything. He was going to sweep it under the rug and not do anything about investigating it under, uh, as a crime. But then when we put pressure on him to see, to, to, to refer it out, he, he finally did that. So. At that point, Ms. Alcala has now blown the whistle on a police officer who does really bad things to women when he's in the car with them. At least one. I, I can't imagine that she's the only one. 
I don't know how many other officers participate in this activity, but we intend to find out. Um, but they intend to fight us every step of the way. Miss Alcala is staying in the home of some friends in an area that the police should not even know where she's at. And yesterday she was pulled over in the morning for a traffic violation. And the officer let her go, told her he would mail her a ticket. She drove off as he was leaving, as he was walking back to his car. A few hours later, I, well, I, he, the officer failed to return her driver's license. So I wrote an email to the sheriff and said, can we please make arrangements to get her license back? Uh, several hours later, he writes a email back to me that says, well, sorry, but there's a lot more to this story that you don't know. There's a there's an arrest warrant out for, for Miss Alcala for, uh, I think he said, for pulling away from a traffic stop. I, I never knew that was a crime, but pulling away from a traffic stop. I've done that many, many times. Um, but then in parentheses, he said he referred to the to the crime as evading, um, obstructing that stuff. And then they also ticketed her for or uh, the warrant was for because she pulled allegedly we we absolutely are, are 100 percent uh, not guilty of this and we will fight it. And um, so uh, allegedly she passed a bus, a school bus with its lights on. That was part of the arrest warrant, a an arrest warrant for two misdemeanor traffic offenses. The the passing a bus, the maximum is a, a penalty assessment of $100. Anyways, she gets, she calls me at three o'clock. I'm over in Roswell dealing with some other stuff for, for clients over there. And she's frantic. Again, remember that she was staying at a home that that's not hers. It's, it's a friend loaning her home, the police, go to that house and I say police I mean the deputies there's no reason why they should have known she's there except for the fact that they're not going to let this go she blew the whistle on a bad cop and they're pissed mm -hmm. and they're taking it out on her and it's freaking egregious like I told the court today what's going on with her and the sheriff's department it wasn't one officer that went to arrest I'm a little guy she's shorter than me it wasn't one officer that they sent. They sent the elected sheriff to go arrest her with eight or nine of his deputies on two traffic citations. How does that not, how is that not retaliation? It's absolutely outrageous. And then today, when we get her out of jail, I'm sitting there in the lobby of the jail waiting for her to be released. And I get an email from the district attorney's office. They filed a new motion to keep her in jail until the trial on the, on the first charges. They keep to keep her in jail for traffic tickets. The sheriff's department and now the prosecutors are retaliating against her for blowing the whistle on a bad cop. It's outrageous. Okay, so at this point, she's she just got out a couple hours ago. We fed her. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that I mean, obviously, anybody who's been in jail, that's the first thing you want to do when you get out. <laughs> <laughs> um, what What do you think we're we're What are we doing from here on out? Do we? Do I we don't want know, to Jim, talk? You were you were at the sheriff's office today. You saw the way that they acted. They kicked. They violated your First Amendment rights. We're filing a lawsuit on that next week. Right. You can't just kick somebody out for exercising the First Amendment rights. And, and so, so that's another lawsuit that Lincoln County Sheriff is bringing on the people of Lincoln County in New Mexico. Okay. Because the, the taxpayers in New Mexico are going to pay the bill on that. And not even to mention the the the, uh, the civil rights case that we're building against, based on on what they're doing to uh, Courtney. Okay. It's going to be big. All right. So we're, we're fighting all of the alleged criminal charges against oh, her and, and also filing lawsuits Absolutely. on her behalf Absolutely. for what they're doing to her. Yeah. Um, we're not ready to file the lawsuit yet because this is far from over. The sure. way they acted today and then the, the last minute uh, motion from the district attorney's office to keep her in jail. Mm -hmm. This, this, I, I. So it's going deeper than just the sheriff's department. It, it appears. It would appear. That the DA yeah. may be in on. And this. the lawyers that I'm working with on these civil rights cases, I, I call them and tell them what's, what's happened next. And they're like, oh my God. They, how stupid it, it can makes, you get they, uh, yeah i guess it almost as if they have absolutely no care in the world whatsoever what the law is mm -hmm. almost as if they know they'll get away with mm -hmm. it and james i i attribute a, a lot of it to you and what you and your colleagues do on youtube calling out this corruption they're pissed they're scared they don't like what you guys do with your constitution and all that 
do you think we should stop or do you, do <laughs> no. you think that we should let them know that we're not scared of you we're tired of being bullied and and, no, and we're not going to back down this time never stop we weren't going to stop anyways oh, <laughs> you, oh I thought you're... <laughs> <laughs> no but but that's what they would like for us to do right and that's why they're bullying her that's why they bullied me that the whole thing is to me it looks like and they're willing to take it out on her for what you're doing and what the what your viewers on and, and your colleagues on youtube are doing for showing take them take it off on her a mother of four kids six six kids for showing the world what they've already done to mm -hmm. her they're fully re, they're, they're further retaliating mm -hmm. against her mm -hmm. all right anything else uh anything else you want to say i think that may cover it all for now okay all right we will uh i i will go live and and uh, keep you updated on this. I think there's some stuff going on. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on around the country. Um, I am probably gonna go live one more time tonight and we're, I'm probably gonna look for uh, Lincoln County Sheriff's deputies out here uh, and try to uh, confront them and talk to them. Uh, but there is a, a, people were asking earlier, why did you walk out when you were told to? I don't need to get arrested to, to have the same exact lawsuit as if I were to spend the night in jail. So uh, I'm, I can't express my gratitude for having an incredible team behind me. That includes um, Zach Cook, that includes Blair Dunn and a number of other folks. Um, so thank you to everybody who's, who's and, and you guys who are also uh, uh, making phone calls, letting, letting them know that, hey, we all have eyes on what you're doing. We all know what you're doing and we're tired of you bullying people. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.